Hey guys, hope you had a great weekend. Today is a special color grading tutorial. It is by request of someone named Anton Medvedev, and it is the Zack Snyder Justice League look. And this is a, actually a really cool color grade because it is kind of a, a has complementary colors. We have a little bit of teal and orange going on, except the teal is very desaturated and kind of pushes in the realm of of green, of kind of light green. And so it, it makes for a really cool color grade because in a lot of scenes, everything is so desaturated and dark and gloomy. And then they have all these colors that pop out that are really saturated. When guns are firing, when, when stuff is going on, lots of those colors, the red, the orange, really pops. The blue really pops. Um, like on Cyborg and stuff, and that really adds a lot of emphasis on the action and the fight scenes. So it's really cool. It's a really cool grade, and today we're going to be kind of basing this off of a frame in the movie, which has Batman, Flash, and Wonder Woman. So this shot is a shot from Art Grid, and I want to give another huge thank you to them for helping me out in my time of need, with my hard drive breaking, and with lockdown here in Saigon. Can't go out to get footage to color grade with, so having this this footage available, especially in log, is so, so handy. So, like I mentioned, this is log footage, and the first thing you want to do is, if you shoot in log is convert it to a Rec. 709 color space. So today I'm going to be using Color Finale 2 Pro today, which is an awesome plugin for Final Cut Pro. I've done quite a bit of tutorials on it, and it really steps up your color grading game. I highly recommend it. So I could use Assume Log, which it easily converts this to a Rec. 709 color space, because this is log footage, but the issue is it just brings it down way too much and it crushes a lot of my shadows here and so uh, I'm actually not going to do that I'm going to do it manually so open up your layers panel or your color wheels in Final Cut Pro's native color grading tools and all I'm going to do is convert this to Rec. 709 by expanding my dynamic range and adding a bit more contrast if you look on your Luma waveform which measures brightness this line right here is just the letterbox so don't pay attention to that it shows that I'm uh, going below zero IRE, which is a, a no-no if you want to keep detail in your shot, but that's just the letterbox here. So I'm going to raise up my highlights a little bit, making sure not to go above 100. I may lower this a little bit later, but for now, let me just expand my dynamic range. I'm going to lower my shadows, not below zero, maybe right about there I think is good. And then I may bring up my midtones a tad and add a tad bit of saturation. And that's it. That's just converting that to a Rec. 709 color space. So usually the next step in the color grading workflow is to color correct your shot. And that's just to make your shot a little bit more natural to what our eyes would see. However, this shot looks fine as is, and we have a lot of RGB lights that are coming in. So I'm going to skip that step and move right into the look. So let's rename this contrast sat, or I can actually just name it log to to Rec. 709. And then I'm going to add another color wheels here, and we're going to start to add our look. In the Justice League color grade, it is a lot of desaturated teal that kind of swings toward, toward the green, like I mentioned. So we're going to start to introduce that. So in the lift wheel, which is your shadows, the darkest parts of your image, I'm going to pull my color wheel towards kind of the, not towards the teal, we're going to mess with the teal in the midtones but I'm going to pull this towards the, the darker blues, and that's just going to add a little bit more blue into the shadows. You know what? Something I forgot to mention is I need to have my comparison viewer up. So you can find your comparison viewer if you go to Window, you go to Show in Workspace, and you click Comparison Viewer. That'll give you kind of a side-by-side -side of whatever clip you would like to work with and, and match, which is really helpful. So. We added that, now let's go into our gamma wheels, which is our midtones, and I'm gonna pull my color slider towards the direction of teal and green. And I'm kind of gonna crank this a lot, and we will pull back on it. So I would say that color matches up uh, maybe right about there. And I'm gonna start desaturating these. So I'm gonna go to my midtones and pull down on my saturation slider, and the same in my lift. Okay, so we have that. That looks decent. Turn this off and on. We have kind of uh, made this look a little bit more cinematic, dare I say. I may push that a little bit more. And the next thing I may do is add a little bit more contrast here. So let me rename this, and we'll just name this look. 
Um, the next thing I'll open is my color curves and go to my master curve, which will adjust my Luma value. And I can leave it on Luma and RGB, and that will isolate these three from each other. And I'll just make a slight S curve here. So I'll pull down on my shadows. It, it now is affecting my midtones as well, a little bit in my highlights. So I'll push up on my upper midtones and highlights just to give it more oomph in the highlights. You see how that kind of makes her skin pop and makes that ground pop a little bit more. And I may just fade this up just ever so slightly. That may give a slight fade in my shadows. Pull this down a little bit. So, so far we have log to rec 709. Then we added our look, which we added a lot more teal, but kind of towards the green in midtones, and then more blue and teal in the shadows. And then we just added more contrast. And uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is start to desaturate these colors a little bit more. So I'm gonna go into the teal vector, which is something you can find in Final Cut Pro's native color grading tools. This is essentially the same thing that hue versus hue does in the HSL curves in Final Cut Pro. So I have the teal selected and I'm just gonna go to saturation and start to pull out some of that saturation in the teal here. And you'll see that that's kind of gonna make it a little bit more accurate. You know what I may do, because I just am not happy with how far that comparison viewer is from my shot. I'm gonna turn off my comparison viewer and just put it directly over my footage. So let's put this in the upper right left-hand corner here. Okay, I'm gonna adjust these colors a little bit more. I'm gonna go back into my look and let's pull more uh, kind of blue and teal into my shadows, desaturate them a little bit and do the same with my midtones. I'm gonna pull more of that color into my midtones and try and match it up as best as possible with the shot above. And I would say that looks pretty good. And then I can go back into six vectors and I can decrease that saturation a tad. There we go. So if I turn off that six vectors, you'll see it, we adjusted the saturation just ever so slightly. And I could actually go into my hue and, uh, and dial that in, dial the color in exactly how I want. If I really wanted to make this match up a lot more, I could go into my red vector and swing the hue of my red and try and match it up with Flash's uh, color and maybe desaturate everything a little bit. There we go, that looks pretty good. Turn that off and on. So we desaturated the teal, we changed the saturation and the color of the red a little bit, made it a little, little bit moodier. And the next thing we do, the last thing we'll do is clean up our shot here. So let's bring up the HSL curves, which is the hue saturation luma curves. And I am going to go to the sat versus luma curve where I can change the saturation or the intensity of color in different brightness values. So I have the darkest areas, the midtones and my highlights on this line here. So in color finale two, I can click this very dark circle and that'll make a, a selection in the darkest parts. I'm gonna hit command and add another point here and then anchor this by pressing this point. You know, I may do one more, just one more to the right. I'll anchor this point and then make these smooth and then I'll just adjust this. And this is pulling out the saturation in the darkest parts of my image here. Let me go like that. And then I may do the same thing in the brightest parts of my image. So click the light circle and I'm gonna bring the brightest parts of my image down and that's just gonna desaturate probably right in here. And if I turn this off and on, you'll just see it desaturates everything quite a lot and makes it similar to how if we look in Batman's under his arms, it's black, it's desaturated. It has a little bit of a blue tinge on it but uh, actually this may be too much. So we can maybe go to our look again and let's just pull this even more in the shadows. Pull that and let's swing it a little bit more and let's turn this off and on and see how that looks. There, that looks pretty good, pretty spot on. Our colors are accurate to, to what we got going on here. Our teal is kind of a green and very desaturated. Our shadows look pretty clean. I wish she was lit up better. I wish she had some lights on her that's not just this neon, this LED right here, because then we could match her skin a little bit better with Wonder Woman's, but this is what we got. Yeah, you'll see her boots right here. This red is kind of a dull red and that matches up with the same red over here. And if I want to copy this grade, you can press Command-C in Final Cut Pro and then Command-Shift-V 
on whatever clip you would like to copy the effects to. In Final Cut Pro, I can just press copy, go to the clip I want, and then click paste. And then I can make adjustments from here if I want, so. Okay, so let's go over what we did real, real quick. So we converted the log footage to Rec. 709, and that just adds more contrast and saturation and brings it into a color space that we can work with. And then we added our look, which was a lot more cyan into our midtones and shadows and uh, we desaturated those a little bit in this layer. And then we went into our curves and we added more contrast. Um, I may actually bring down my highlights a little bit to make it a, a tad bit moodier. And we just made a slight S curve, which is just adding more contrast. And I can just rename this contrast. And then we went into our six vectors and we brought our saturation down even more. And I think we slightly adjusted the hue of our cyan. And also in our red, we brought down the saturation of our red to make it kind of that dull red that we see in their clothing. And the last thing we did was we cleaned up our shadows and we cleaned up our highlights by taking out the saturation and those values. So you'll see just by looking under her arm, just in this darkest part, that it just pulls out that, that blue tint in the darkest areas. And this really helps to make your footage look more professional. If we look at this comparison comparison shot, it's exactly what is done here. Batman is not showing a blue tint in this darkest areas. It is a, a clean black, which is really nice. That's it guys, it was a couple steps, actually a really easy color grade. So if this is something you enjoyed, do me a huge solid and press the thumbs up button. And I also wanna give a shout out to you guys for helping me reach 10,000 subs. It means so much to me. I put in a ton of time into my videos every week. So the fact that you guys put your faith in me means a whole lot. So thank you guys so much. And if you have any other requests in the future for future videos, just shoot a comment below and let me know. I would love to do more kind of movie comparisons, shot by shot matching. So shoot me a comment below and I will see you guys in the next one.